That's me that did that. <laughs> the consequence is I can't be loved for who I am by my own father. I can't be loved who I am? Yeah, you can't my be loved for who you are by your own father right. when you're playing that game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you, feel, do you feel the authenticity of this moment? Yeah. This is the conversation you have to have with him. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. And then you read all this other spiritual stuff, and you know you have to practice and whatever and not speak. And I, I disagree. I told, I... Well, I think you know what side of the fence I'm on. Yeah. But then I don't want to put any blame on him. Well, then you don't have to. Right. It is po- By the way, we got to get this through. Our- it is really possible to have relationships where we have these conversations about how we authentically feel without placing blame. Like you can even take responsibility for feeling victimized. Isn't that interesting? I want you to think about that one for a little bit. You can actually look at somebody and say, look, I feel really hurt in this circumstance. I feel victimized. That's me that feels that way. What I just, and of course, I've given you that exercise, which I swear to God, you guys, is going to come up all day today, this meaning exercise. It literally saves relationships. What it looks like is this. In the moment you get into a conflict, you are essentially adding meaning to an experience. That's what people do, right? So let's say that your dad, give me a scenario. I just want, like, a typical scenario. He's sitting down at the table. You walk in and you say... Hey, Dad. Hi, how, how are you? What does he say? Fine. But we don't even, I don't even say hi, Okay, so, so that's all that, <laughs> now look at that. <laughs> wow. Maybe I should come live with you for a week. <laughs> yeah, I think that would help. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, so there we go. Did you see that? If, so from the onlookers, basically, that scenario would look like nothing, right? Yet there's all this emotion involved in just that stupid little interaction. Why? Because we're adding meaning to the experience. He says, fine, I make that mean what? My dad does not care about me at all. He doesn't see me. So I'm going to react emotionally like that is what he said. So that is the moment in the relationship for the authentic conversation to occur. Not 10 minutes later, that minute. That's when you go, Dad, when you just said, fine, and nothing more, I just made that mean, that's me taking responsibility, see? I just made that mean that you don't care at all to see me. Is it true? Mm Mm-hmm, yes. No, it's not true. You don't know yet. But the point is, you're giving him an opportunity to set the record straight, instead of creating a very painful reality for yourself. Okay. Yeah, well, he kind of no- said it the other day. He feels he, he, um, oh, what's the word? He let, he let me down. And what did it feel like to have your father say, it? I feel oh, like good. that? Yay! We but he need- can't do anything, he said. Like well, financially, he can't do anything. So why is that a problem? Well, because he thinks he has to set me up financially. Do you think he has to set you up no. financially? Well, I did, but... <laughs> Because he hasn't and he can't, I realized that, well, I'll have to drop that. So I have to set myself up financially. That's also another big thing. Not enough. Well, we're going to have more people who want to talk about that. About so that. I can tell you That's next. what I figured, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. But I, w- I want that to be your practice. That's the self-expression. How do I authentically communicate in the moment? In the moment, exactly. About what oh, I'm making yeah. things mean. Okay. Now, it means you do have to ruin your dates, yes. <laughs> it will ruin your, it will actually save them, but it will feel like you're ruining them. You're like, you're, especially your first dates. You'll go out on those dates and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, don't tell me I have to do this right now. I'm feeling that emotional reaction. Am I more committed to the date or am I more committed to my own spiritual practice? I'm ruining the date. Okay. Just then, when you did this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, back at home, people I communicate with, it's fine, right? It's pretty good. Yeah, but I want you to start doing this with everybody. But I'm talking about, okay, the people I don't really communicate with anymore. I don't have to call them up now. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> okay. It's mm-hmm. not like I'm going to haunt you in your sleep. You might hope. Maybe I will. 
but <laughs> that's good. I'd like that. <laughs> I want you to start getting how free you are. And this goes for everybody in this audience because so many of you just mirror this. It's like, I want you to understand how free you are. Like, if, I'm up here talking to you. If you don't want to take the advice, you don't have to. You can literally just throw it in the trash can. It's not going to kill anyone. Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? You have total creative control over your reality. Sure. So the only thing you should ask yourself is, do I want to commit to this practice for me? If I do, I'm going to go call people. If I don't, I'm going to sit here and watch people talk on stage. Okay. I'm all about immediate action. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, if I had my way, like people, if I give them advice, if I had my way, but that's my ego, right? Yeah. They would literally pick up a phone and go outside right now. Mm -hmm. No time like the present. Yeah, well, well, there was someone who was a, a, fr a former friend, and I have, she still kind of goes around in my mind, and maybe I should talk to her. It's but, liberating. Oh, okay. Because I've been pushing it off and think, okay, okay. Yeah, just like yeah. get used to shoving yourself off of the cliff. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, who's next? You're like, should I raise my hand? You guys are so timid, my God. <laughs> Interesting, front row hat. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. Too. Yeah. Louder. <laughs> Afraid. <laughs> um, my question has to do with letting go of this fear of being seen. So here I am, scared to be seen. And I know. I've been hiding for years, as you know. Um, <laughs> and so I put myself here so I could be seen. Um, part of this is judgment. I, I hold myself back because I judge. And I judge others and I judge myself. Um, I'm not sure what I'm afraid to look at. Uh, when you talked at the beginning, I could feel that I've been keeping my heart safe, but that is my calling. Have you been keeping your heart safe? Have I? You're throwing us right into the depths, I love it. <laughs> Have I been keeping my heart safe? Okay, here we, we have walked into, you just illustrated for us one of the massive illusions that we have on our planet. I, I can keep my heart safe by preventing it from touching other people and other things. Is the state of starvation safe? <laughs> yes, I've been starving. But is it safe? Oh. No, it's not safe. It's not safe. So life is inherently dangerous. <laughs> I've never been afraid ultimately to challenge myself to walk in on any situation ultimately I'll go there it's, it's the fear of um, being who I really am 
just when you you talked into that blog about Vancouver, it was me you were talking to. <laughs> yeah, it's it's this magnificence that I hide, and like with my wife Tracy, um, I'll go in after we've had some issue and I'll go into the bathroom and I'll look in the mirror and get to this point where I can, okay, I'm loving myself and I'm present and and I'll be shining and I'll see that. And then as soon as I step out of the bathroom door, it's like there's this dimmer switch. <laughs> it's afraid to actually shine. Well, what you're describing is quite common. It's basically what happens when you are in a space where the only opinion that you have to interact with is your own. Then the second you exit your house, your a focus and attention switches to how you're perceived. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've been living that world most of my life. Mm -hmm. So what's the worst that can happen? The gutter. How would you be perceived then? Actually, I don't have a problem with the gutter so much. I, th I think it's, uh, it's the other. It's really what I'm after. It's the world stage and it's... Oh, that makes you so evil. That is it. Yep. <laughs> He's like, really? Oh gosh, wait. I can't tell whether she's joking or not. They laughed. But, yeah. So what do I do? What's the worst that could happen? Tell us what you're really scared of. Pretend, that, let's swap jobs, okay? Okay. I want you to just literally put yourself here. I want you to pretend that this is your audience. <laughs> Not to put any pressure on you, but you have to entertain everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's easier, actually, now that I look at it. Because like, I, I saw so much soul in the eyes of the people that walked in here today. And actually... All of you helped me so much, looking in the mirror, seeing so much love and so much light. All that inner beauty that Teal was talking about in her blog that Vancouverites have been hiding, I, I could see it in so many of you, right there, right here, right now. And it, it gave me a chance to breathe into my own self, into who I am, and, and go, yeah, you, me. We, and I was so thankful. I'm so thankful to have this time to share with all of you. You're all so beautiful. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I'm still nervous. <laughs> We spend most of our time trying to eradicate fear when the reality is fear serves you. It serves you immensely. Not only that, we are not supposed to conquer our fear. We are supposed to essentially carry it like a child. The point is not to become fearless. You are not going to meet one person on this earth who has achieved anything that is completely absent of fear. You're going to meet people who succeed on this earth because they are capable of carrying their fear forward regardless of whether it's there or not. The attitude to have towards your fear is this. I love you. I recognize you. I understand you. And I'm moving forward with you. Mm. So you did that stepping up here. Yeah. But I still want you to go to what's the worst that can happen. The worst that can happen. Mm. We got to become a lot more aware in this particular audience because a lot of times, I don't know if you guys have noticed when people have been up on the stage, you're the second one now, who has presented the idea of one way that you are and then contradicted it 10 seconds later. You say, oh, I'm afraid of being who I really am. So I say, okay, I'm giving you a challenge. You're like, no, that's easy, see? <laughs> so what is it that you're really afraid of? 
myself. What about yourself? Power. You're afraid of power. Control. You're afraid of control. Well, I've been controlling. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've been controlling. Why is that so bad? Well, now we get into the powerless thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, right now, yeah. do you feel us dancing? We're like dancing around the subject right now. Yeah. We're not, like, it's frustrating because we're not getting to the meat. What's the meat? What's that super unsavory thing you need to say? You're still painting a nice picture of yourself up here on stage. Okay. Yes, this is it. Um, I haven't found that place yet. I've been trying. You're being too careful with your words, first of all. Okay. I'm, I'm scared of my dad still. Um, if I see you, why is that frightening? Because I want you to love me. And, and if what you if don't, I, then... What if I don't? Yeah, this is... What if I go backstage after this? I'm like, oh, that guy was such a tool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> why? Because I love you. So if you love me and I don't love you back, why does that hurt? Um. See, this is the good stuff. This is where the ego takes over. It tries to prevent this from happening. I wore the hat. <laughs> All right, there it is. Um. I don't know how me till I don't know. Where I am right now. I want you to sink into your body. Okay. Just close your eyes right now. Okay. And tell me what it feels like inside your body, sensation wise. Um, just really j nerves overload. <laughs> um. Do you feel tingly? Do you feel constricted? Do you feel. Uh, Numbness, what do you feel? I feel like the vibration of a railroad track. That's a story. Okay. I want the sensation. Tingling. Where? Everywhere. Especially the hands. What's going on in your stomach? Oh, huge tension. I've actually had to undo the top button and hide in there. <laughs> Just like. <sighs> I want you to invite that tension to get bigger. Your job is to just let that be in your body. This process, by the way, is how we learn from emotions. We have to invite them to speak to us very loudly. See, but like right now, he's not in a state of reactivity. He's in a state of awareness. He is observing his own body's reactions. I 
I want you to give this sensation the message that you're completely here with it. When was the first time I felt this feeling? Baby. Do you see where you are? There's a crib, I think. How are you laying in it? down I think I don't need you to compose yourself okay that's an appropriate way to feel <laughs> you feel desperate like you can't get what you need okay. right I need you to invite that feeling. In first person perspective, you're gonna intentionally re-experience it. Okay. Did you see him shift into his power just then? That's the moment that somebody becomes the eternal being having a human experience. That was acceptance. So at this moment, I want you to switch. You're now the adult in the scene with that baby. I want you to pick the baby up. I want you to tell him that it's perfectly right to feel how he feels. And how did he feel? How does he feel? He knows me. I see you've been doing your inner child work. <laughs> yeah. He's, 